$200. A Super Nintendo setup costs twice as much as the old system. For the money, the company promises better pictures, sound, and adventure. Now you're playing with power. Super power. You're the king, I tell you! You're king! Only for Super NES. You're listening to the SNES Podcast with your host, Soul Blazer. Hello, everybody. This is Super NES Podcast, episode number 235. Uh, this is Greg, joined by Joe. Hello. We are your regular hosts on this podcast, and this time we're covering a game that I thought was actually something else when I first suggested it. So, <laughs> um <laughs> Uh, but it's all good. Uh, we're taking a look at King Arthur's World, uh, like this episode of the podcast. And one of those, uh, another one of those, like, um, probably fairly popular, but very obscure nowadays game for the system, which I think, like, a, would have, which I think you probably could say is accurate for about, like, maybe like a third, a third of the library, uh, probably. Um, you know, like, obviously games decline in popularity over the years, or, like, over the years or whatnot, but, um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how you feel about that, Joe. But uh, the you know, that's kind of the impression I got. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'd never heard of this game before. <laughs> well, this game was developed by very like a very well-known company, our uh, Argonaut Software. Uh, they were. Uh, we have not actually covered. We have not actually covered covered one of their games yet. Uh, so we'll talk about them for like a little bit. Argonaut was a British company that was around from 1982 to to, to 2000 2007. Um, uh, although the last game came out in I think 2004, let me check with like real quick from that. Yes, 2004. So um, uh, they are best known for their work, uh, like their work for Nintendo, uh, like in developing the FX chip, uh, which was used to um, which used the glorious effect in games like Star Fox One and Two, uh, and also some other games like Star Racer FX, which may cover here at some point. Sorry, Star Race FX, which, 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 which may cover here at some point, uh, I mean, like in the podcast. Um, but they mostly, uh, most of, um, uh, most of their games range toward the European market. So some of the, like, so, like, so, like, 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 so some of their games are more popular here in the West. I'm sorry, like North America. Um, they weren't, um, uh, you know, they, 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 they weren't the biggest name, like, over here. So, um, yeah, they also, uh, 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 they also, they also were involved in some of the early hardware work on the Game Boy as well, too. So, a lot of their, so it's like, a lot of their work was, a lot of their work was in hardware stuff as well as, as well as software stuff, which made them very, uh, unique as a company. Um, they're probably, they're, they're, they're probably best known, uh, Joe, I'm not sure if you, um, so I'm not sure if you play these games, but they're probably best known for having, they're, they're best known, like, for having made the Croc games. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so when you were thinking of games that they had done, all I could think about was like, well, they did Croc One and Two, which yeah. is amazing because those actually started as pitches for a 3D Mario. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. That's how th that origin came about. So it's pretty cool to go back. Uh, Croc is one of my favorite PlayStation games. Um, it's not very good on the Saturn because of the six button controller, but um, <laughs> on the PlayStation, it works really, really well. Um, and yeah, as, as far as like PlayStation games go, like I still go back to that game, um, even with all the jank it has. Mm. Uh, yeah. So, uh, some of the games, some of the games that they worked, uh, um, uh, that they made, that maybe, uh, 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 maybe familiar to people here, um, on the podcast, uh, Days of Thunder, uh, which is a pretty good racing game for the game, um, uh, of uh, like, like BC, like BC and Game Boy, um, mm -hmm. They made I Ninja for, for the, um, uh, one of their last games, like in 2000. Did you ever play that one? Actually, I did. That's actually yeah. a really fun game. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's pretty good. Um, they, they also made Creature Shock for the computer. Um, they also made Alien Resurrection, which was a shooter, uh, like the PlayStation. A couple of the Harry Potter games. Um, uh, and they, uh, 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 and the Star Glider games for the uh, ST and Amiga computers, which were very hmm. uh, fancy for its day of uh, flight sim games. Okay. So, um, and they were also uh, like they were also credited in Star Fox Two when that got uh, re-released, um, uh, finally officially, officially, officially on Super NES Classic Edition. So, it, so even the, like even the company 
so, so, so even though the company made the last game in 2004 and shut down in 2007, um, people still know their name primarily these days. I, 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 I think five theories of the Starbucks games. Uh, yeah. You know, they work like the FX chips. But um, King of the World came out for the system in 1993, uh, um, um, 1992 originally in Japan. Then got released in Europe in 1993 and, and didn't actually make its way to North America until September of 1994. Um, curious, right about release schedule there. You'd think it would have got released in Europe first because they were a, a British company, but it actually came out in Japan first. So I don't know what that like the odds of that. Maybe, uh, like maybe because the publisher, uh, because the game maybe. was released by Jalco. So um, and Jalco was a, Jalco was a pretty big company in Japan too, also back in the day as well. Um, so you know that could be you know that could be a uh, better reason for it. So um, King Arthur's World is best described kind of like a it's like the best described. Like the best, like the best described kind of like a clone, like a Lemmings, uh, just like set. Um, you know, you you did different. You know, just you just very different setting, environment, and some different like, gameplay mechanics. So, uh, if you played Lemmings, you're pretty familiar with basically how this game operates. Um, you control King Arthur. Um, like the flesh every level. Uh, you only have the king present, uh, and there's very types of troops that get troops that can be brought out. Um, you can move the king and the troops, like, tro- troops in direction, uh, which will do like lebbings until they receive new orders. Um, there is combat in this game. That's one big difference between the, uh, um, the, 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 the game and lemmings because the lemmings were nonviolent. Well, I mean, you could make the lemmings blow themselves up in glorious ways, but <laughs> right. there, there wasn't actually. A, but but you weren't directing people to fight like you were in this game. Yeah. So, so like that's one big difference that this game does have. So um, so calling the clone lemmings is probably a bit fair. Definitely inspired by lemmings in similar games, but you know the developers were they were trying to add their own like wrinkle, uh, yeah. you know, like the formula. So. Um, like lemmings, you're going at, like lemmings, you're going every level. Um, is to like to perceive the intent to start to the finishing point, um, which is done in various ways depending on the stage. Um, King Arthur is the only central character character in the game. If he dies, the, pl- the player has failed. And, there, and this is also no difference. It's a very curious uh, system where you can spend a hundred gold coins. I'd uh, like to bring him uh, back to light. That allows you to resume yeah. the that allows you to resume the game that the player left where you left off at. Um, or you can also choose to start at the tent uh, if you want to. That means you have to like, replay the level. So, um, and this is also a handful of games that actually supports. And this is also this is also a handful of games. A handful of games actually, you know, actually, um, that actually just, like supports the Super NES mouse. So, trying emulation, the mouse works pretty well. You know, I think I actually like prefer using the mouse as game play versus the um, versus the controller because the fine because some of the some of the moving around the system, the, the screen came a bit janky. I thought like trying to use the D pad. So. Um, anyway, that's the game, uh, that's the game, like, a nutshell. Um, it's a fairly long game. Uh, there's, like, there's, like, about, like, um, uh, there's, there, there's, there's a training world, and they, a training world, like, they have the, uh, um, uh, four levels after that. I'm sorry, like, four worlds after that. The real world, uh, the goblin, the goblin underworld, uh, the cloud world. And then I'm, I'm sorry. That was that was four worlds: uh, training, real world, goblin, and cloud. So with a very um, uh, uh, like a very number of stages, uh, like each of those. The game has about like 25 stages all together, which doesn't sound like a lot, um, but some of the stages, especially later on in the game, get very time consuming. The the average the average that's plays for this game uh, play this game on, on YouTube start to finish run about six to six and a half hours. So it kind of shows you just how. Just how deeper the game gets as you like yeah. you get into it, how much more time consuming that it gets. Because like Lemmings, the first stage is pretty quick and easy, and then later on it doesn't take very long before your brain power gets taxed in a serious way here. So, <laughs> um, I actually found this game to be harder than Lemmings. Uh, I'm curious to hear what you thought about that, Joe, and overall like over your impressions, flex of the gameplay. Well, d- definitely harder than Lemmings. I'll give you yeah. that. <laughs> um, my notes uh, to kind of put this game in a nutshell um i also used lemmings to describe it um but i i also said that it kind of meets the attacking power of worms um oh yeah that's a good analogy yep yeah yeah so uh one of the things that i found very frustrating about this game is this game requires a lot and i do mean a lot of trial and error Mm -hmm. um I will have no problem embarrassing myself here on the podcast. Um, the 
very first training stage, there is rotating panels over a pit. Um, I don't know how many soldiers I sent into that pit, not <laughs> thinking about the timing of the rotating boards and all that other stuff. Um, I, I had to reset that one level quite a few times. It was quite embarrassing uh, once it kind of clicked. Um, other than that, I used a controller. Um, a controller is so clunky. It is, Oh, my yes. God. Yeah. Um, it made everything a lot longer than it needed to be. Um, sometimes I would call on the wrong troops, uh, which is fantastic. Um, quite a few times I made King Arthur move before I wanted him to, which resulted in his death. Um, yeah, this is like, so me in the late nineties with my PC, uh, would have loved this game. Um, me in 2024 absolutely despise this game uh as far as gameplay goes we'll get into mm. everything else yeah uh, but yeah it's the controls were really clunky um i felt it was very slow um it does absolutely require a lot of brain power like i said even with the brain power it's trial and error you are mm. going to die you are going to lose your men um unless you're Cheating, if you're using Game Genie and you continue to replenish men and have infinite amount of men, then you can make whatever mistakes you want. But um, definitely with the men that you uh, start off with, you are bound to end up making some mistakes and uh, having to restart for sure. Um, it was frustrating in the sense, like I said, it's trial and error. So... I absolutely loved the fact that I had gotten my guys over that pit. Like, I finally used my brain power and figured out the timing and got them all over there. Uh, only to find out there's a guy in a tower with a bow and arrow that just picks them all off and kills them anyways. So, it was like inch by inch having to learn everything. Um, I really wish that there was, and I know this would kind of take away from the puzzling aspect, but I wish there would have been like hold left or right button to kind of like at least zoom out a little bit and see a little bit more of the map mm -hmm. so this yeah. way you could kind of pre-plan i think that would have been nice but outside of that you know gameplay i think would be better with a mouse uh you stated yourself that you enjoyed using the mouse uh in emulation and i think that would be probably the better uh situation but yeah, I mean, it definitely gets harder as you go on. I'll tell you that. I got as far as uh, facing the goblin guys. Um, and at that point, I said, you know what? I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's about as far as I got in the game, too. Because, yeah, yeah uh, the cloud world is very difficult. Um, you know, those, um, I think, like, let me let me check for, like, real quick here. I think that... Um, oh, and... And in full transparency, I mentioned the game genie because obviously I was cheating. So <laughs> even getting cheating and getting to the goblin world, I was like, nope, I'm not continuing. Like, I can only imagine playing it legit, you know, and not having an infinite number of infantrymen that you can kind of send out and literally die for the purpose so you can figure out the puzzle <laughs> well i use save states which is my form of cheating i, did, I, I mean that, 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 I, I didn't bother with any kind of yeah yeah game genie codes or whatever because this game does use a path yeah because this game does use a password password feature so you can't like like can't like can't let's like, you can't record your progress right. but there's no cheat codes with the game or anything like that right. so uh or whatnot but yeah so yeah just taking yeah just take a quick look here. The last world, Cloud World, uh, um, you know, just long play that I have like pulled up right now. The last world takes up three out of three hours of gameplay, out of six and a half hours of gameplay that the video is. So that alone tells you how much difficult the last world is. Um, uh, because it's not very, yeah, because that's not very bound to have that much game time for a relatively yeah. small chunk of the game. Right, but right. anyway, um, yeah, I mean, I mean, to be fair, 
a lot of a lot of the same complaints and issues I have this game I had of Lemmings as well too because also like yeah, because Lemmings is also very clunky to move clunky to move around to like the yeah. pad uh, mm-hmm. the controller so um, some of the problems the game has are not necessarily the game's fault itself it just it, it just the, it's just the drawbacks of of, uh, of a company trying to make a game like this for this system which yep. the time period only used the controller yep. You know, I am glad they included the mouse. That the, the mouse is an option, but uh, but you know, I don't know. But you know, I don't. But I don't. Uh, but I don't know how. Um, yeah, I don't know how many people uh, would would have, would have had a combination of this game and the mouse because I because I don't know how well the mouse sold. But um, yeah, yeah, it's like it's like using using a mouse with the uh, using a mouse with the controller. Uh, uh, sorry, the console back then was kind of like I get against the point, uh, yeah. so to speak. But so uh, yeah, it, while it is easier with a mouse. Uh, the game does suffer the same clunkiness that Lemmings does, but Lemmings is still pretty fun despite the clunkiness. So, um, I, I did like this game overall. I, I share I, I share your frustrations with this game for sure. It's it, it, um, you know it's not it's kind of a hard game to get into nowadays. Like you said, twenty twenty four because you know there are other games like this that do a better job uh, yeah, these days that absolutely. have better controls, but. For what it was, the time period, it wasn't, a, it wasn't a bad game. It's like the developers were trying to make something similar to Lemmings. Like a, like you said, a mashup between Lemmings and Worms is a good way of describing it. Yeah. Um, they kind of succeeded in hitting the high points, the high points, like above genres, I thought. So, um, it's like, yeah, the game has, the gameplay has issues and it, it's a very, very hard game. So, you know, like you have to, like, so you really have to be like a master of games of this, of this type to, to really want to sit down and play this. But, um, it's not like a, um, you know, it's, uh, programming wise, this is not a bad game. The developers certainly knew what they're doing here, like this game, because obviously Argonaut Note knew the Super NES quite well, having worked, they had worked at uh, some of the hardware aspects of it. So, right. um, you know, they knew the system very well. Um, the game, um, you know, the game flows smoothly. Um, the graphics are very good. They're definitely a highlight. Yep. Uh, you know, yeah. uh, uh, um, you know, the graphics of the game, like a very like large cartoonish. Uh, detailed sprites. It, it's pretty easy. It's pretty easy to recognize everything. Like what it is. So uh, bright, bright colors. Uh, good environments. So yeah, the graphics are definitely a plus. A uh, uh, major plus. Music is fine. Gets the job done. You know, it's a very, um, it's a very appropriate medieval sounding theme. Uh, themes that plays during the game. So uh, yeah. uh, and, and like I said, the passive the passive feature at least gives you the ability to, the ability to make progress and then come back and resume if you're playing this game back in the day. Of course, like Joe and I just said, we're using save states nowadays to cheat. So, right. um, but yeah, so. Uh, yeah, for for its time and what it was trying to do, I, I thought that, um, I thought this was a pretty good game. I think this is another. I think this is another, another one of those games that falls in that category, of which, which 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 other games we covered before have also fallen into that category of being a game that was pretty good for its time period that doesn't hold up very well today for various reasons. And like I said, most of those reasons I don't think are the game's fault. Yeah, so the three positives I had about this game was, as you mentioned, the music, uh, the European court style, uh, just fits this. 100% absolutely love it. Um, and the character design and just really the levels in general, it's all bright. It's cheerful. Uh, there's cute little character designs. Um, you can actually tell what each character is, which is really nice. Um, and then of course the third one is the password system, because even if you wanted to play this legitimately, uh, that password system is going to be a godsend for sure. Um, Overall, um, my <laughs> my my final thought. Um, I I I made it short and sweet, and I think <laughs> it hits the point. Um, this is a unique game. Yes, yes, absolutely, yeah. it hits that checkpoint. Um, fun. That's going to be subjective to the kind of games you like. If you like games that are super slow, if you like games that require a lot of thinking and pre planning. This is definitely a game for you. I do not, you know, discourage you from checking this game out. But if you are not into a game like that, do not attempt to play this game because the frustration will build rather quickly and then you'll end up quitting and then you'll email us um, and let us know (laughs) that we told you to play a game that you shouldn't have. (laughs) yeah, yeah, I was gonna, yeah, I was yeah, I was gonna say something similar, 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 but you did a very good job of succinctly stating those thoughts. Uh, yeah, if you like, 
but but you enjoy games like but you enjoy games like like lemons and worms and want a more difficult version of the version of those games. By all means, check this out. But so I'm not saying this game the game's terrible. Uh, I, I it's just that nowadays this game is a very niche market. Yeah, even more even more even more niche market than it had back when it first came out originally. Uh, because I, I I don't remember exactly when Lemons came out, but, this, uh, but yeah, I'm sure Lemons came out a couple of years before this game did. So you know, games like this were popular the time period. So anyway, um, but but yeah. So if you enjoy games of that sort and want a more difficult challenge, definitely check this one out because I, because I said going to the podcast, this is a relatively obscure game, I think. So. Um, you know, even though it got, um, even though it got like worldwide release, um, you know, it, it, um, uh, it, it, it was not like a huge, uh, release as far as the, um, you know, as far as the, um, the, the, as far as the market went. So yeah, so, so as long as you know, as long as you know what you're getting into, you definitely get, you, um, I, the, uh, they definitely can have a fun time like this game. Yeah. And, and just for reference, Lemmings came out in 1991. Um, and then came out for the, you know, and that's for the PC or right, Amstrad, yeah. Amiga, all that. Um, but it came out for the SNES in uh, March of 92. So. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. By the way, uh, but just, the, um, just a real like quick note. This is another one of those games that we see a different name when it was based in Japan. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, um, Japanese name is Real Conquest. Which I guess kind of fits the game better. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because, you know. I mean, because there is, the, the, you have the actual story talking about the King Arthur, and, and you have like little story bits here and there yeah. talking about talking about King Arthur. But it really, it doesn't. It, it, but really, King Arthur is just like not needed at all for the games. Like it, 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 yeah. it's just like you could, it's not like it's it's just you could have just generic X guy in here trying to do this and like be done with it. So, um, but yeah, so. Uh, the Japanese name did kind of seem better, so. <laughs> um, so I was very curious to curious to hear to hear about this. Uh, some of the original developers of the game, uh, way back when, had the rights to the had the rights to the games. So they had, they had the games like revert back to them. Sometimes it happens. You know, usually come usually when the game is developed by the by the person for a developer. That developer gets the rights to the game. However, usually in contracts, it's, it's, it's usually stipulated that it, that the company goes bankrupt or anything happens to the company. Those rights at the time those rights after time period will 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 revert back to like the original developer. Mm. Uh, one of one of one one of my favorite games of all time, Star Control Two, had this ha- uh, uh, had this happen happen to them. Uh, that's why that's why the developers were able to go ahead and and, re- and make an enhanced version of the game and release it for free, called the Iroquois Masters on the PC. Which 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 by the way, I small tangent. I highly recommend you playing playing the game if anybody has, hasn't played it. It's an awesome game. It's free, so you really have no reason like not to play it. Um, and 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 the developers just did a Kickstarter last month as of recording this, where they funded the sequel, the official the, the long awaited sequel to the game. So uh, that should be out next year at some point. So I'm nice. so, 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 uh, so definitely looking forward to that. Anyway, anyway, yeah. So the developers got the rights to this game back in back 2018. They were working upon making a, a mobile, a mobile, a mobile version of this game uh, to bring to, uh, uh, to introduce the game to like new market and, and the new audience. And the game, the game got to demo with the demo stages, the demo stages at least, because there are because there are, you can't find you can't find like articles and videos, and whatnot. The game was functional at least to some degree, and and you know they're talking about adding additional enhancements and whatnot to make the game a little more friendly or you know like you know typical like you know new stuff players yeah, look for when you play when they re-release or remake an old game right. that kind of stuff but um i don't know what happened to the project i couldn't find anything i couldn't find anything on it but it looks like it something happened and never got finished I did not. I did not. Uh, um, you know, I did not see the game. Uh, th- th- I did not see. I did not. I did not see the game list on the Apple Play Store. I can't find any. I can't, I can't find. Any, li- 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 I can't find any, like the evidence that it ever did actually come out on the Apple Play Store. So yeah, I, I don't. So I don't know what happened. The project. The project. The project looked. The, the project looked like, looked like pretty promising. Um, so, because this game would have. This game would have played very well on a mobile phone. I think. Absolutely. So I I think it's funny that we both did the exact same thing. And, um, you know, although history and some of the background stuff um, I don't have to worry about, I just play the game and show up. But um, I, I occasionally, you know, look at the history just to, you know, this way I have some sort of knowledge coming in. And uh, I saw that they were or had started a, you know, mobile port of the game. So of course I went on the play store to see 
um, and could not find it. And then did a little bit of poking around and basically found the same thing you did. It looks like there was a prototype that, that was working that's at least out there somewhere, but uh, that's it. But I agree, man. Like, this game would be great on mobile phone because one of the biggest things I, I had, you know, with this game was the controls were slow and clunky. Well, mm, when you yep. click on everything uh, yep. with your finger, there is no slow and clunky at that point. Now it's you're the one who's causing the issue, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. And, like, you know, like, you know, I play some mobile games. I don't play them like this, but I do know that games right. of this type are very popular on mobile platforms, specifically, specifically, specifically because of that reason that you just mentioned. You know, they're very easy to control because they control because of the whole, like, a touch, um, a touch interface, like, and whatnot. So, now, I mean... 2018 is a long time as far as like uh, it's a long time to pass as far as like mobile game development goes. It's like there's not many games still available for sale in 2024 that originally came out back 2018. Right. So the lifespans of those games is usually uh, spans are mobile games tend to be tend to be relatively relatively short. Uh, either because the developer loses interest in supporting the game any further, or because that the new version of the iPhone or, or, or uh, you know either I uh, you know or the iOS operating system or the Google Play or whatever breaks the game because uh, the game the, because the game can't play on the newer versions for whatever reason. Many great mobile games are stuck in that situation, unfortunately. So yeah, uh, we always talk, yeah we always talk about like games being lost in time. Uh, in the PC and console market, it happens. It, it, it happens everywhere. It happens. It happens. It happens, it happens in mobile space too. Yep. Um, there are some. There are some very unique major franchise games that are only got a mobile release, and you can't get them nowadays. So they're lost time. So um, it sucks, but it is what it is. But yeah. um, but anyway, yeah. So so anyway, yeah. So I, 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 that's unfortunate. It's unfortunate that never came out because I think that had the game come out with. For the promise upgrades and features that they were, that they were, talk, that they were talking about doing, I, I think we're, you know, I think, um, you know, I think the game, I think the game, like, done that like, pretty well. So, um, it was an, I guess, interesting, that was an interesting footnote. Uh, um, I found, I, I found, I found my like, research in this game. Yeah, so, absolutely. Um, so yeah, so because of that, this game is, this game is obviously not available for sale anywhere, um, you know, in the current market. Um, it looks like that when the, um, looks like that when Argano went bankrupt, um, looks like that most of their rights went to Rocksteady Studios. From what I'm seeing on here, so not all of them. I mean, obviously, obviously this game, obviously this game went back to the developer developers. I'm sure some of this, uh, I'm, I'm sure, some, um, you know, I'm sure some, you know, I'm sure some of their other studios um, did too as well. So. Right. Um, but Rocksteady, Rocksteady, by the way, is still is still alive and well today. Uh, they're best known for having made the Batman Arkham games for yes. Warner Brothers. So not only did they acquire most of the most of the most of the Argonaut properties, a lot a lot of a lot of employees employees went to work for them as well too. So um, so at least so like at least there was that good thing about that. Um, but anyway. So yeah, so uh, that's pretty much the game in a nutshell. Uh, I think we have, so. I think Joe and I have already covered most of our thoughts like on this game. Um, relatively shorter episode this time around, but it's like I said, you know, there's just like there's always so much you can talk about the actual without like, like going into the actual like deep dives into like stage or whatnot. But right. um, I can't say as a final thought that I thought this game. I thought this game was very creative in some of the puzzles and solutions. It played more so than I mean, played more than Lemmings was. Yeah, you know, definitely, you know, it definitely wasn't a ripoff. The developers definitely put some. The, you can tell the developers put a lot of effort, effort, hard work, and hard work in trying to make uh, a pretty challenging, fun game. Well, how how will how will they succeed? Succeed is up to you to determine. But you know, they could have at least. But the developers very easily could have very easily could have very easily could have just like a straight a straight cash cow grab copy of Lemmings, and they didn't. Yeah. So Agreed. so like I do, I, I do I do so I do appreciate the fact that the, the fact that they did try to put in some unique ideas in here, and then and, and like Joe said. This game does play kind of like a mix between like you know like um, uh, worms and lemmings. So uh, it's definitely any I, I to anybody who's a fan of the franchise definitely should check this game out at least. So uh, I will say that like about the game. Um, as mentioned, there are passwords, but there are no uh, for passwords, but there are no passwords that help you to get. Um, there are no, there are no passwords. The passwords save any kind of advantages or anything like that. So. Um, 
the game must have sold fairly well because uh, because the game's not hard to find. Uh, is it because the game's not hard to find on eBay? Reflecting the fact, however, this game's not very well known. This game, the price of this game, are pretty low. So if you're a collector or uh, they're going to try a physical copy of the game, you can pick one up for like pretty cheap, yeah. uh, as far as Super NES pricing goes. Uh, twenty-five, sorry, fifty copies of the game are currently listed on eBay. As as we do research, twenty-five copies of the game had sold recently. Uh, these prices include shipping from North America only. The cart, the, the cart only version of the game is sold anywhere from fifteen to fifteen thirty dollars. So not bad for Super NES car car prices. Uh, CIB wasn't CIB wasn't much more expensive, thirty-five sixty-two dollars. Yeah. So relatively uh, cheap game to get for your collection. Yeah. Um. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Like this game, like I said before. Sorry for um, to, uh, um, uh, uh, as everybody out there, like there's been like a smaller, a smaller episode. But you know, as I said, there's always so much we talk about here, like about this game. So, um, but uh, so next time the podcast, this is my pick. By the way, I was thinking, I, I got this name so, like so I got this game confused, confused like another game. I, I'm not gonna, so I'm not gonna spoil, spoil, spoil what I'm thinking about like right now because I do want to add that to the game to our list eventually, but. We have our list this year pretty much, pretty much, pretty much locked in already at this point. So, uh, we, so, like, like, we, like, we would not play that game until next year, at least. But, um, but anyway, Joe's, Joe picked this game that we're covering. Speaking of, like, obscure games, uh, what are we looking at next time, Joe? We are looking at Jim Power the, and the Lost Dimension 3D, um, if I remember correctly, supposedly this game has some sort of pseudo 3D. Um, that's kind of the gimmick, as it says in the title. So it's a platformer. So we'll see. Uh, I expect it to be hot garbage in all reality, but we'll see. <laughs> I've never played it. <laughs> so, like, what made you pick it? I picked it because I wanted to play it. <laughs> <laughs> Was there was there a view out there uh, out there somewhere that caught your eye? Was the game was the game system was the game listed like on a hidden gem or like a bad game list for the system? No, like, no. So this is just one of those like uh, you know YouTube being YouTube having lists of games <laughs> and everything else. Um, they showed like a five second clip of this, um, and they mentioned that you know it does like pseudo three D like with the backgrounds and everything else. And I was like, on a Super Nintendo, that's pretty interesting and i guess there may be a like 3d glasses gimmick that might have come with it like i said i I didn't look any deeper into it yet because i wanted to cover it but um yeah so like there's there's definitely something going on there i haven't heard anything negative about the game um but that doesn't mean that there isn't negative stuff about the game so (laughs) Um, yeah, so, yeah, so, um, uh, just, just taking, just, just taking a quick, just taking, like, a quick look at it, um, it looks like the, it looks like the game does use 3D, 3D elements, but it, the elements, but didn't actually, like, use any glasses or any glasses or anything like that, so. Okay. Um, the history, the history of this game actually looked pretty interesting, so I think we'll have some, more, um, so I think we'll have some, like, yeah, so, if nothing else, I think we'll have some great meat to talk about here, like, yeah. this one, um, yeah, um, uh, next time around. I, I thought at first, uh, but I thought at first I was like, wait a second, like, isn't that the, wait a second, Jim Powers, like, isn't that the name of a wrestler? But, <laughs> um, but no, it's not tied into him, like, anyway. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he is a wrestler, but it is not uh, tied into him at all. <laughs> but, okay, anyway, yeah, so enough spoiling uh, next episode, so um, look forward to that next time. Um, so, uh, as always, we appreciate you taking, t- 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 appreciate you taking some time to listen to us. Um, if you have any questions, comments, feedback, et cetera, you can contact us on Facebook or you can also send me an email directly to the SNS Podcast Yahoo.com. Joe, where can I reach you at? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at J O E S U X 30. Also, you can catch the Radical Retro Roundup, not family friendly. Um, that also has a Twitter at Retro underscore Roundup. And of course, I have a public Facebook. You can come hit me up there. Okay, cool. All right. Well, as always, as, 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 as always, as always, like everybody, appreciate for you to listen to us. Stay safe. Be well. Catch you again next time. Later. Bye. Nintendo controls eighty percent of the video market, but no matter how you play the game or which game you play, things definitely have come a long way since Pac-Man. Now you're playing with power.
Steampunk Power.